Rishi. <coughs> yes. The things we were doing last evening about, like, that sort of not focusing, yes, taking yes. a point, mm -hmm. and the, the not naming, and all of those things. I find it difficult to incorporate those things into actual every like communicating with it, it they can I can do them when I'm on my own and I feel very much like I'm going around in a little bubble or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but when I try and put that into yeah communication I mean I think it's mostly dealing with other people that I'm saying it I can't. I find it very difficult. In terms of what we were doing last night, why would you want to do that in terms of communicating with people? Well, it, I, I think it's that thing of it's all very well, and I because I know it's a similar thing to going in retreat. It's all very well to say, I can do this, you know, when I'm stuck away on top of a mountain or whatever, but how about bringing it into one's yeah. life? Mm -hmm. So there's that feeling that, well, something ought to be transferring. Maybe it yes, well, the, that is, <coughs> <coughs> again, a great deal of nonsense talked about retreats and tops of mountains and uh, seclusion and things like that. Um, I don't regard that as a, as, a, as a destination. I just regard it as part of a direction. Um, the idea of being secluded, going on retreat or going to a mountain or whatever, is so that one can practice what one wants to do in everyday life and gradually filter into everyday life to do it and gradually get used to more and more and more and more. Uh, see, the more you are bound up and caught up in something which in a general sense is called not minding one's own business, uh, the more one is caught up in that uh, and the more you are caught up in the world uh, then the more difficult it would appear to be not attached to it. So I'm not talking about an averse rejection in terms of detachment, I'm talking about non-attachment. And this is a much more gentle thing, to be not attached, not to own, not to need, not to desire something. It is merely not attached. You don't put any uh, qualification or valuation on anything at all. Uh, if you wish to be free of the uh, the aversions and the possessivenesses and things like that, they go along with having attachment to things. Um, on the other hand, if you feel you want attachment to things, then go ahead and enjoy the attachment to things but still maintain the understanding of the reality behind it and know that what you are engaged in is a device for your own convenience and for your own pleasure and enter into it wholeheartedly. But at the background you've got to have an understanding this ultimately, when I say ultimately, is not real. What I am projecting onto that person is not real. What I am projecting onto myself in relationship to that person is not real. So that if the device and the attachment to something reaches its natural conclusion of 
too much attachment or too much identity with that thing that you're attached to, uh, then that is the time when you really need this background of understanding that things are, that we create are not real or not that real uh, to provide you with an antidote to this device of this is me, this is mine, I am this that one has built up. Without that device everyone is lost. Everyone buries themselves in objects, events and people from which they gain identity and um, after that you've nowhere else to go. There is no place, no sanctuary inside for you to go to because it is filled with the objects, the event or the person that one has become attached to. And it, it can work just as well with a, an object of aversion or of hate. It still feels, it still fills the consciousness. Wherever one is involved with aversion, with possession, with um, love, need, possession of any kind, and that occupies <laughs> the position that Kanzar should occupy, uh, then there is um, there's immediate need for a, a quite radical uh, burst of insight to, uh, to straighten you out. Does any of that make any sense to anybody? Mm -hmm. Good. I know that this flies in the face of mm. popular beliefs, philosophies and religions in the world, but um, that is no reason for not saying it. Um, but it can be a little difficult to listen to because it feels as if everything that one in quotes, believes in is being dismantled and laid at your feet and is told it's rubbish. Um, rubbish it may well be, but it is rubbish that you have grown up with. It's rubbish of your habits, it's the rubbish of your conditionings, it's the rubbish of your opinions. Um, don't expect to Mm. denude yourself of all those things that are very precious to you in one fell swoop because you won't do it. It takes sometimes a few days, sometimes a few weeks, sometimes a few months and sometimes many years to let go of the attachment to things by which we identify ourselves and from which we gain identity. So don't be disconsolate if you don't say, ah yes, that makes sense, I'll do it. Which isn't as easy as that. But if you can have a background of doubt about the, the certainty and the truth of everything in the world that one has grown up with and by habit, by nature, believes in, if you can have some doubt about that and say, well, look, is this really true? Is such and such really certain? And if someone uses a word like God or fate or anything like that, is, is this really true? Am I expected to believe this? Uh, what do I actually feel about it? What do I know about it? And if you want to know what you feel and really know about it, go into Kanzar and sit quietly. And in Kanzar, there's nothing that is that much important to cause you any great bother or any trouble, unless you want to invade Kanzar with it, which is a rather rash thing to do.
I recommend before you sit in Kenza, ever, not just now, before you sit in Kenza, to make sure that you have stretched, that you have the armpits, uh, the groin, the inner side of the elbow and the underside of the knee open and the jaw open because if they are tight you will not sit quietly you will sit restlessly you will sit with a goal you'll sit with an aim You will sit and fumble for what quietly is and what quietly means, which is the typical result of too much thinking. Mm -hmm. Is it possible at all to live completely in the world with all worldly things around you and all worldly activities and yet to be unattached? Yes. Um, or let's make it easy to be not so attached as you used to be. If I can put it that way. And to be free from some little attachment or to be free, considerably freer than one used to be on an attachment that is very dear to your identity to your temperament. To be free from that is a great relief, a great freeing. Um, what completely is, I, I leave to everybody else to decide what completely is, but um, if you can free yourself from the spirit and the need for attachment, then that's going quite a long way towards it. Uh, you can deal with it and say, I, I, I don't need this. I don't need this kind of um, specialized attachment which builds up my idea of myself or my role or my identity or my temperament. I don't need this in my life. It is intruding in my life. Um, and sooner or later, everyone, no matter how old you are, has to say, it's time I grew up into a mature human being and let go of some of the early conditionings, early temperamental devices and methods that I had when I was 15, 16, 17, whatever. Seven years old even. How many of you could say that you're not influenced by things that happened when you were seven years old? Or 15? Are you still behaving like a teenager in certain circumstances? And are those certain circumstances um, producing areas of vulnerability or blindness in your life? This is very important. If you can feel for areas in your life where you are blind not so much can't see but will not see that can be very helpful this is a very maturing process but to start with you have to start with a thing which is called doubt wherever there is a vast certainty one must doubt and if you go through that doubt and you emerge certain at the other side, then that is much better. But make sure that when you are going through doubt, you are not clinging stubbornly onto some certainty because of the identity you gain from it. In other words, your quest is for truth and not for your own identity. And that is also very important. If you go into something looking to prove something, find out why you want to prove it. It's not good, 
it is not sufficient to go into any investigation.